last where Shanann's phone was, Christopher went to the couch. Shanann's phone was and found in the couch cushions. Nick, he did not know what the password was to Shanann's phone. Nicole knew it, possible date of birth of their unborn son, and turned it on. Christopher gave consent to look at her phone. No calls were made that morning. I contacted Detective Baumhauer and requested he to come to the residence. Christopher stated Shanann arrived home from a trip about two, 200 hours. He was asleep at the time. He woke up around 500 hours to get ready for work and they began talking about them separating. Christopher stated it was a civil conversation and they were not arguing. They were emotional though. Christopher stated they had been talking about separating for a few weeks. Christopher stated about 5, 27 hours he backed this his truck up to the garage to load up tools and left. Christopher stated he had tools stolen in the past and now he unloads his truck on Fridays. Christopher stated Shanann was in bed at that time. Christopher stated Shanann told him she was going to a friend's house today with their two children. Christopher stated he did not ask Shanann which friend's house she was going to go. Christopher stated he went to a job site, oil well, past Hudson, Colorado, to check on it. Christopher stated he was there alone for a few hours. Christopher said he was an operator for Anna Darko. Christopher's mother called during this time and was adamant that Christopher had done something and that I needed to check the GPS on his truck. Christopher's work truck has GPS on it. Detective Baumhauer and I checked the residence thoroughly. Shanann's purse, wallet, phone, credit cards, etc. were all at the residence. I observed nothing suspicious inside the residence. Vehicles or garage that gave the appearance of an altercation. The master bed had the comforter sheets and pillows removed. The fitted sheet was next to the comforter on the floor and the pillow were the pillows were on the other side of the bed on the floor. I did not observe the top sheet anywhere. Nicole stated Shanann works from home and it, ex it is extremely unusual for her to leave without her phone. She does direct sales and doesn't go anywhere without it. I checked with neighbors to see if anyone observed some someone coming or going. Nathaniel Frenistich, neighbor to the east, showed me his home video surveillance. At 14800 hours, Nicole's vehicle is observed leaving. The video does not show it arriving. At five. 527 hours Christopher's truck is observed being back being backing into the okay being backing into the driveway Nathaniel and Nicole both stated they had never seen him back into the driveway before it leaves a short time later the rear of the truck was obscured from the camera by the garage the video shows no other vehicles coming or going the garage door of the residence was checked it did not open from the outside but did open and close from within Christopher gave us consent to check Shanann's phone. It had an alert which stated the garage door was open at 12.42 hours. Detective Baumhauer took the phone to the Frederick Police Department. Christopher showed me his phone which shows alarms times when, alarm times when the doors are open. It set an alarm at about the time stating he had left, he had left the garage door open. Christopher told me that at least three times, which I felt was unusual, Shanann's phone showed an alert at 12.42 hours for the garage door, which is the only way someone could leave the residence. So that would be 12.42 p.m. if I'm not mistaken. And he's at work. If I, am, I, is, am I getting that right, Eddie, with the, the time, the military time? That, that would be um, a, or p.m., right? So, huh, interesting. Which is the only way someone could leave the residence? Christopher's demeanor was nonchalant. He asked one time if he could go look for his family. I advised him her car was at the residence and I needed him there for now. He did not ask again about looking. He did not seem overly concerned. Nicole and Nathaniel said they both felt Christopher was extremely nervous. Nathaniel said he had heard Christopher numerous times in the past yelling loudly at Shanann. I canvassed the neighborhood. No one I contacted observed any vehicles coming or going or anything unusual. I left business cards on a few residents that had video surveillance and requested copies if anything was observed. I had Weld County Dispatch send a check well-being bolo for Shannon and the children. The contact was recorded on taser camera. Nothing further at this time. Okay. So...
Let me play. Hey, Raven. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to make sure that with the time. Okay, so this is the supplemental report, which is like there will be hundreds of these throughout the discovery, but this one for this specific time is like the, you know, as they were logging the evidence of, um, from the, the house, you know, the, which will later be, and I say air, this loosely air quotes, the crime scene. Okay, so. This was at 1.40 on the, August the 14th, so we're at Tuesday now, which is probably about 24 hours after they've been, uh, the wellness check was done. So this says, type code recovered, description, pillowcase with residue, quantity 1. Okay, so, and then it says recover date, which is so weird because it was logged on the 14th, but yet it says it was recovered on the 15th. So... Um, as you'll see, it's very frustrating because I'm someone that likes to sink my teeth into like facts and shit. And when you know like little simple stuff like that where it's probably should have been changed around. Um, regardless, it's like why are you making it like you have a due diligence to be like, hey, this is not the right date. And trust and believe they've redacted it over the years and more and more keeps being taken out of it by Rourke. So it's like why would you not correct your – like your typos and stuff like that. Just because at the end of the day, as long as nobody knows what is what, it's a big clusterfuck, excuse my French, then, you know, the the less likely you are to pinpoint anything that could, uh, you know, to make them... I don't have a word because... Accountable? It would, like, I don't even know. It just seems like they were really eager to close this case. I've never seen a case open, especially with this much, um, with this many different aspects to it. You would think it would have had a long, thorough investigation that later would have been turned into a documentary and a, a you know, and, and a teaching, you know, thing. But it, I've never, ever seen a case close so fast in just a lack of investigation, like, I, it blows my mind. Like they should had to have had forensic evidence and data and an investigation from not one but several different professionals. That way you could say you unequivocally case when you say case closed that means wham bam thank you ma'am we know this is done. Like it's a they closed this case on a theory because that's all that is in here is a theory. Chris's confession makes no sense. If you try to like play it out and make it make sense with the timeline and the physical and forensic data, it just does not make sense. Nothing about it makes sense. Nothing. It's like he was reading from a script and is just sticking with it because there's nothing that says anything about the events that he says happened, happened. Like nothing. In the order they happened or nothing. Like and I'm not saying that he's innocent by no means, and I'm not saying that he doesn't belong where he's at. I'm just saying when there's that much you can question, how can they sleep at night, any of them? But it's my, my main focus is Rourke, that slimy scratch. He should slither when he walks and talks. Just, he's a snake. <laughs> Lunchtime, see? So who was... Opening the garage door from the inside at 1242. Huh? Because it wasn't Chris. He's not a, he doesn't, he's, he's not a, um, ast astral projector or whatever it's called. He was at work. Or, I mean, I don't know where he was at, but he wasn't there. And I feel the need, like, when that, when the investigator said at the beginning, when I first read that, that Chris felt the need, which he thought was strange. Now, this is the, the Colorado, like the the pl actual Frederick Police Department guy, the Baumhauer. Now, Co Kevin Kobach and Coder, they step in and take over, and they're the CBI, and they're the fucking crooked ones, and Rourke, in my opinion. Allegedly, this is all my opinion. Please do your own research, form your own opinion. This is my thoughts and my 
uh, my take of it. And um, the the fuckery starts happening when they come on scene. Because you notice, like, he adds at the beginning of it, like, I thought it was strange the way that he kept saying, he said it three times that Shanann's phone had an alert at 1242. Shanann's phone had an alert at 1242. Shanann's phone had an alert at 1242. And that's the only way somebody could have left. He specifically says that, okay? Keep that in mind. Because it won't be mentioned again. It'll be completely overlooked. And I feel like the way that they have their camera system set up, if it was enough to set the motion detectors on the door, there should be some kind of surveillance that motion, like the triggered the motion cameras in the house. Because there was cameras in every room. Not just outside on the garage and, and on the front, you know, in the doorbell. There was motion sensors on every door and there was cameras in every room. And the girls had separate cameras that streamed to a monitor, like a, a digital whatever, you know, like a dip baby monitors in their room. So there's no way there was movement going on in that house and nobody knows about it unless their the Wi-Fi router was unplugged, which we'll get to that in the discovery because I, I I think that was very conveniently done several times in this case where oh not necessarily because they thought the police would be tracking them, but because Shanann was the one that was like you know, getting the alerts to her phone every five minutes and if they were like, you know, setting the trigger you know setting the alarm off in the house and she's able to get suspicious and turn it on and be like hey who's at my house so i i think he was getting you know really familiar with or comfortable with unplugging the, at least the wi-fi router and saying oh it's a problem with vibrant or vivant however you say it and i'm on the phone with a customer service right now because we'll see that in several points in the discovery where shenan's like what's wrong why is the camera's not working what's wrong with the you know and i think that was him avoiding her you know not i don't i don't necessarily think that he anticipated uh i really think he thought he was going to get away with it so that makes me wonder like what was the really what was the end goal what was the actual plan because there's no way he thought he was just going to kill his family and nobody would look for him that's crazy that is just insane to think i think it's like deeper than that and for him to think that there would be no investigation and be that comfortable and that um, sloppy it's because he did not anticipate an investigation which makes me think that there was like probably going to be some insurance fraud scheme kaboom you know we've I've talked about this before but I want to say this like as a before we get too deep into it that way when there are certain parts on the discovery I'll, I'm going to like stop and be like okay well this this is what made me lean this way this is what made me lean that way this is what made me think this this is what made me question that okay so moving on pillowcase with residue pillowcases two and i think it's super weird that they valued him like i mean i don't know I guess that's a thing what else so top bed sheet with residue i don't know what residue means if that's like makeup or um i it, I, it could mean several things but i digress um Apple Watch, uh, set one of seven with the serial number seven thousand series, color green. Okay. Apple Watch. So the green one I'm assuming is Chris's, and the pink one is Shanann's, because that would just make sense. Um. Serial number is unknown. I wonder why that is, but they have the other one. Anyways, moving on. MacBook Pro with electrical cord. iPad with pink Cabney Lee brand hard case. Echo from the kitchen area. Okay, who is Anna Darko? Anna Darko is the company that Chris works for or worked for. Um, it's an oil, like an oil drilling well, like a big, big, big. They've they've since then merged with. I believe oh my gosh I would have known they merged with oxy which is like I guess Chevron um, yeah which is another thing that leads me to my suspicion because that was conveniently done like you know the, the just 
Rourke conveniently was uh, went from being the prosecuting attorney to the elected district attorney after this case. Um, it's just a lot of things that, like I said, could be completely, com completely, completely coincidental. But um, I just feel they're worth noting because they could have nothing to do with one another. But I do, however, want to mention the timing is that this, you know, just one happened right after the other. I believe it was literally like this case was open closed in 2018. And I think 2019, early 2019, Rourke was elected as the DA. So that's there's that. Um, Nicole was probably doing a clip. I definitely don't doubt that because... Um, I don't, there's no way if it happened, let's just humor them in their timeline at this point. If it happened in those wee hours between the time that Shanann got home at two in the morning until Chris leaves at five 30, that is not a lot of time to do the act, get rid of the act and then clean up anything left behind. There's no way there's not in, there was not enough time. He's not like uh, and it's his, um, he wouldn't be able to go to work because he, if so, he would have been like running around like a chicken with his head cut off, literally like sprinty the, sp sprinty the speedy sprinter, and like he wouldn't have been acting so normal at work, you know. In my opinion, and this I could be wrong and just completely misjudging it, and maybe he's got way more, um, maybe he was got like super Hulk strength and was just like, oh yeah, I'm, but I just I don't see it. He wasn't even that buff. He was a little mediocre guy, you know, not. To, not throwing shade, I'm just saying he wasn't even like I've seen more muscular men, I'm just saying. Um I just don't believe that it happened the way that it happened, and if it did, and we play devil's advocate, there's no way that he did it alone. No way. It's just it's not possible. Logically, there's not Enough time, and if and if it was, it would have been sloppy, and there would have been evidence and, and clues everywhere. That house was spotless when the police did their first walkthrough. There's no way, unless he, unless you want to start breaking it down and saying, okay, well maybe he had time to clean because he had already did whatever was done to the girls before Shanann got home, and then whatever happened to her happened as soon as she got home. Then I we get into more plausible scenarios, but that's not what the DA says unequivocally without a shadow of a doubt that he knows happened. The same one that is such a poo swall wouldn't even look at the fucking crime scene or, or the autopsy photos, but he knows what happened. Do you? Because sounds to me like you're a little squirmy wormy and you couldn't handle what really happened. You have a theory that made you feel warm and fuzzy outside, out, inside and when you closed this case and got your fucking promotion and that's just wrong. Scroungy fuck. Anyway, sorry. Beep. It's trigger warning, so that, that goes with it. So, now, the Echo from the kitchen. I find that very interesting, because if you know anything about Echo and the Amazon devices, the Alexa, they are um, programmed that if they hear commotion and stuff like that, like, they record it. And I just wonder, like, what the what that hurt, you know? And why they why they logged it into evidence, you know? And it's you don't hear any mention of it actually in the discovery. I'm sure it is, but it's in the redacted shit that I paid for and didn't get. Assholes. Okay, so and then they um they took the Netgear wireless dual band router. Um which is interesting. So no, we got leggings slash cover clothes possibly last seen in. I don't possibly. What do you? I don't like that. And if so, like. Anyways. Book hold me tight hardback. Light blue nitrile glove. All bedding and pillows from Bella's room. All bedding and pillow from Cece's room. Corner master bedroom comforter. 
all master bedroom bedding and pillows, master bedroom men's clothing from corner, clothing on master bed, all clothes and hamper in master bed bathroom, baby monitor, two cameras, Dell laptop, Chris Watts work computer. Okay. Right, right, right. And I would look, be interested to know like all the different devices and the times that they connected to it because if you sign into it with the password, most devices will like automatically sign back into it. And I would just like to know like just for my own, you know, curiosity like how often Chris was coming and going and you know and just and how often honestly I'm not going to beat around the bush how often Nicole was coming and going right 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 interesting so on August the 13th, at approximately 16, 1900 hours, I arrived on scene to the 2800 block of Saratoga Trail at the request of Officer Coonrod. <laughs> Coonrod. Sorry. Upon arrival, his... Okay, see, the typos in this drive me crazy. Come on, Rourke. You're the DA and you can't do spell check? What the freak, French toast? But you can sure redact some shit. Fucking asshole. Briefed, misspelled, me of information that Shanann Watts and her two daughters, Bella and Cece, were missing from the residence. Oh, don't we all, girl, Ryan? That would be great. So, oh crap, hold on a second. I just seen... May I come up with... The sure! Hold on, let me, hold on, this is new, let me think. Uh. Haha. I think that's why they're not showing it, girl, Ryan, because of that reason right there, because there's no way, um, just from what's in this discovery, these discovery documents, Nicole tells, um, on one of the interviews, I think it might've been the phone interview that, um, on the day they went to the lazy dog, which would have been Saturday, uh, she drove, like she picked Chris up and then drove him back home. So at least then it would have been, you would have seen her. Toyota 4Runner, you know, coming and going right there at the driveway and dropping him off, according to her. Um, so, it's just odd that <sighs> arrived on scene in where we are, so there should be. Oh, that's a cool noise. Hey, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Cricket, that's actually her phone did ping in the driveway. Um, at six six thirty ish in the morning, six fifteen, which is according to work, right around like that. Technically, would have been after Chris left. 
Because he left. Oh, shoot. I forgot. He left at like 530. And now I found her phone logs, too. And <laughs> I don't. I, I screenshotted like what page they were on so that I could like search them back up later. But I find it very odd that she calls Chris and then she calls Jim. That leave Jim alone. Then she'll call Chris and call. And I mean for months. It's like every time she talks to Chris, she'll call Jim. Her friend Jim, which is like this mysterious person that um, also is a geologist and is friends with her dad as well. And um, it's just interesting because they didn't like they just took her saying, no, leave him out of it and was like, OK, well, we don't need him to corroborate your story. Like even though he was at your apartment on Murder Monday, but we'll just leave him alone. I mean, they didn't even put his last name in the dang thing, but they they put the information of the gal, um, Charlotte, which she was texting with back and forth, and called and contacted her, which is odd because they only texted about it. Someone that was actually around Chris at the sand dunes and was like, you know, you would think that he would have more reason to be questioned and, and called, or at least called in. It's just weird the way that this, investig should I say, lack of investigation. No, they didn't question Jim. She said, leave him alone, and they left him alone, dang it. Like, and there was also also you, there was also a mention of that that um, grey Ute that a couple of the neighbours had said that they saw driving around that they'd never recognised that vehicle before. Right, and they specifically asked, like, did it have a camper topper? So I felt like they the reason they asked that to that neighbour is because maybe another neighbour had mentioned a truck with a camper topper, and they her dad at that time. Now he's since then sold the truck in his business, you know, and you know, and whatever dissolved the business license. But at that time, he, her dad had a gray truck with a camper topper registered to him. <laughs> and guess what? Jim drives a freaking red car at that time, and everybody swears that they see a red car leaving at the uh, when they see Chris go. And like get in his truck like you have to really really enhance it and blur it in but you know I don't I don't go that far with it because I can't see anything I just see headlights but some people swear they see a red car and I just want their vision because like how do you see that all I see is lights <laughs> because the quality is really shitty which is really weird because come on it, with, with all the technology we have you're gonna tell me that the CBI couldn't have done something to enhance that or to make it look but you know it's almost like they wanted it to be fuzzy like that because you couldn't really tell if it was chris or at, at some point the, the walk was a little bit more feminine than chris which should be walking to me but who's to say he's not walking with a little more swing in his hips than i prefer <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i just feel like uh they dressed kind of similar on purpose that day because when she came in for the interview she was wearing jeans and a dark long sleeve shirt Oh, yeah, listen, they've done, they, these people, and I mean these people as in the investigators, they sold off Chris's work truck, like, right away. Like, if so, if there would have been a freaking a, a trial, it's like, oh, well, just kidding, we don't have any evidence, because, sorry, we let the, we, the company, just took it back to auction and sold it. There was nothing wrong with it. Like, it just seems weird. They probably just they ended on, on yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't want to have the bad juju, but maybe it should be an evidence. Like, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> but they still... You think it would be. I mean, Chris there's three people missing. To his family. <laughs> right. They still won't... The case is closed, and they've done all that and sold vehicles, which is... But they still won't release Chris's personal phone to his parents. Like, that's weird to me. It almost feels borderline illegal. Like, that's his personal property. And if the yeah. case is closed, like, what are you harboring onto it for? I suppose I suppose to um, wait for him to go through his appeal periods and stuff like that. But then, then it goes back to why they, you know, why the company sell the truck and that sort of stuff. Why didn't the police resume custody of that vehicle as well? Like, keep custody of that right. truck, or at least take the shit that you did, uh, the evidence you did, you know, collect and take it and actually have it analyzed in the lab rather than just. Okay, well, yeah, we collected it, but we don't we don't need it. We don't find it relevant. What? Or, oh, okay. Um, like it just. I don't. I've never seen nothing like it where there's nothing that can corroborate 
his confession de forensically. Like they collected this, you know, fingerprints and swabs and stuff, but they didn't run it. So like whose fingerprints were they? Whose DNA was it? Who's like, it's just a bunch of, uh, Wendy. Sloppy detective work. Slo yeah, there's, Outback I mean, Wendy. none. And, yeah, this, this is Wendy. Oh, I met her over on Inkies. She is, a uh, from, as you can tell, um, Australia, Outback. She loves Australia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. True crime and bingo. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and, and yeah, I still like, can't understand like the, the that that grey truck thing. That that's really doing me head in. I mean, it just seems like it was just a really sloppy investigation yeah. by the police department. On so many levels too. Yeah, because the uh, one of the other neighbors, they, well, they, they just, actually got yeah. the tag number on their camera, and the pol that's not even in the police reports. Yeah, that's only in like one of the little scribble notes that you can hardly read. That's in the discovery, like all oh, just thrown in there to be kind of lost in the mix. But it it's uh, it's jotted down where one of the one of the officers, you know, took a note of it, but it was never actually typed up into the official disc, you know discovery documents which is so weird to me which is just sloppy just just sloppy police work i mean i don't think the police are trying to deliberately cover anything up it like think i think it was just sheer laziness on their behalf yeah, but thinking it, this is just an open and shut the case ball on just happens to conveniently work in the favor of nicole kessinger like i thought that too at one point but it's like dude if that's a coincidence then she should be playing the lottery like every day Cause she's got <laughs> she's got luck um what was it? like like none other do you know what her dad's um profession was what was her dad's profession he wasn't an ex-police officer was he no he's an electrician like you know but and not even really kind of just ran did more of it like on his own freelancing but he worked for a couple of big companies like in the 90s and the early 2000s but i mean he's just a no uh, as far as i can see um economically just a blue collar you, you know normal nothing major he doesn't have any um upstanding assets that make it you know he's not a i wouldn't even say he's wealthy you know he just and it's it, it, then you come to the conspiracy side of it because none of these things could be confirmed but i hear like on you know on some of the reddit groups i'm in that he's high up in the freemasons and um, and the, all this, that, and the other, and I'm like, okay, well, uh -huh. well if, you know, there wouldn't be any documentation of that if he was, if they're doing what they're supposed there's to be link, known for, link. you know, it's like, hush, hush, but that's the only thing that can they're make sense, because license. when you listen to the, right, right, well, and then, but the way that interview was conducted, they knew each other, the dad and the uh, CBI guy, because he called him by his first name and said, Nick, and, and told him, hey, don't ask this question, you're leading, like, and he listened. I'm like, who the hell's running this show? It blows my mind. Like Cricket Day was asking about whose whose license plate it is. Oh, so you might be able to explain to Cricket the, Day who the truck. license plate is we're talking about. The gray truck that was parked in front of the house the 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 out you know, the morning of the night the night of, morning of, and up until noon, which is so weird because she says it was there until noon and then at twelve forty two was when the garage door closed or open or whatever from the inside come on what was your why was your i mean what was your dad i mean unless you're just using his truck or it's and it's believed cricket day that that license plate of this gray gray truck or gray ute as we call it in australia was registered to nicole kessinger's father yeah, it is because that's how i found it looked it that's, up you know i couldn't that's the license plate cricket. right and then i found it was his business truck which has been um like dissolved since then like he dissolved the business and got rid of the truck and Nicole sold her truck too. the forerunner and changed her name. And, but the name change didn't happen until 2020, which is odd because the case was way close since then. So witness protection, that's, that's not possible. It's a cl closed case and there was no trial. You didn't testify. Nobody, you, there was no investigation. What do you, what do you need? Like that? It's just weird. Like to use those kind of resources for something that, yeah you usually have to have a paper trail and a reason and saying okay you know how did it why i don't know why how a judge signed off on that 
But see, that's where it all goes back to, um, to me anyway, um, Nicole Kay's father being in the Freemasons or the Masonic Lodge or however, you, like we call it the Masonic Lodge and stuff over here in Australia, but it's still ultimately the same Freemason symbol. And they're pretty powerful dudes, you know, like the higher you get up the tree and the prettier your apron is that you wear. Oh, right. You get, um, you, yeah, it, you get the nooks a, and crannies and, it, and doors open up for you, for sure. And this is why you always find with Freemasons lodges and everything like that, a proper Freemason lodge never has normal height windows. They've always got really high windows, so no one can see in, no one can look out, that kind of stuff. It's um a very, like, it is a secret society, right. for sure. Right, and it's very, 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 like, elite. And I didn't even realise that, that her dad was a Freemason, and as soon as you said that, just knowing what I know about Freemasons and... and um. The secret society of it all um they even do like stupid um oh what no way girl Ryan. what is it the stuff they do to to, to, to they even do stupid shit like, like to um inaugurate the, the the brand new people oh yeah like hazing and stuff like in, in um hazing that's the one that's the word i was looking for yeah yeah like they'll even um haze new, new pr prospects and all that sort of shit and and they'll just be like a slave yeah, and, and or do stupid stuff. Literally the same shit they do in, in some of these colleges and stuff back in the day. What? And, yeah, if you say anything, yeah, yeah, it's crazy shit, man. you got to you got to do some Freemason research. I it feel is like just if I Google stuff, that, it's like... going to get me on a list. <laughs> well, once again, I'd probably be um, – you probably won't get too much. You'll probably only get people's stories about it as opposed to – Proper facts, right? Yeah, because it's, all it's, speculation. it's a, it's a right. secret it's all, society. Exactly. It's almost right. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost cult, cult like, you know. Oh God, yeah. So, girl Ryan says that the temple is um, near the park where they met the first time. That, um, so I'm assuming the the temple for the Freemasons. The Freemasons, probably. That is so. And like I say, you can always spot a Freemason building because Freemason buildings always have windows up high freemason proper freemason buildings don't have normal height windows because it's part of the secret society crap well that would make it suddenly things just make a little bit more sense because that would make me more inclined to think okay somebody put the fear of god in chris and that's why he's just sticking to this lie because there's no way he's protecting her at this point like he knows they're not why would he not just tell the truth and get people off his back, if nothing else. Or if he's coming, yeah. having this big and, epiphany yeah. with God, wouldn't you want to clear your conscience? Because the Freemasons are really very high up. Like, you'll, you'll find people like, um, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if people like King Charles and all that sort of stuff were involved. It's a very worldwide society as well. I mean, worldwide. It's, it's, a, it's a big freaking thing. It's, it's, and, and it's always generally, you know, the people that are high up are always the real dignitaries of society right and they have like super and they always always got that 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 triangly compassy looking um what do you call it like a protractor kind of image it's always the same symbol um yeah yeah oh wow no i, I know my dad was in the masons but he never got right up to like in every um state. like in masonic lodge and stuff like that which is dang i didn't I mean, Everywhere, man. Freemasons is a sh is worldwide, worldwide. Huh. Freemasons have probably got more members than um, a lot of religions. Okay, so is there a religion? A very elite is there a religious society. aspect to it? Like, do they? Is there a religion practice that takes place in it? Uh they they follow queen and country or king and country kind of stuff. Oh God! Oh God! Mm. Um, and yeah, if you want to really go back on history, like the way England got to, you know, rule over countries is they overthrew them through violence. Right. Oh, goodness. So. Yeah. So that's just another little thing for you to, to check out in your research and stuff. But if you want to go back to the document or whatever. Yeah. Uh, up to you. Up to you. I'm just don't, don't want to get off too much off track. But yeah, no, Freemasons and stuff. It is big secret society. Big, 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 high-profile people. Um, you'll find you'll find a lot of them will always have um, 
a bit of jewellery on them, like the really high up ones, I'll have a bit of jewellery of some sort. I don't know if they do the jewellery much stuff so much now, but definitely back in the day, you know, they'd have one of those big man rings on them, so straight up, you know, that they're a Freemason um, and they're not someone to, you know, feck around with because they could just sink your ship really quick because they know other high up people in all elements of businesses. It's it's crazy. I, yeah. Mm. Definitely. Oh my gosh. Yeah, girl Ryan a... saying we know what Kaylee's gonna be watching tonight. <laughs> Kaylee's gonna be watching three I'm on my stuff. phone already. Wait, watch later, watch later, watch later. <laughs> That's why I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Got the notepad down. <laughs> okay, so what in the... Yeah, well, and I and I didn't realise that. So I'm glad I did come up because, you know, if we get to sort of I, I can inform you just with little snippets of world knowledge I know, and yeah. Wow. Now, now that I know that Nicole's father was in the Freemasons, um, that's really starting to tick some boxes right. big time. Look. Okay, I want to see. Crazy. Yeah. Freemason temple. Is there like a, is, I don't know that I've ever seen one. And if so, I probably drove past and didn't even know. Like, I'm assuming they have them in Florida too. Well, they generally, most of them just look like a, um, well, in Australia anyway, uh, most of them just look like a, just a boring old town hall kind of thing. Like, you know, like like they're building. normally not anything that really stands out big heaps. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But, but the big, big thing that'll always give them away, like I say, is the high windows, especially for the older buildings. Maybe they've changed the high windows thing um, because they, they never have windows that, like, you can just turn around and look out of. You know, if you want to look out a window of a Freemason building, you'd have to get up on a chair or something. So has anyone else in chat seen them particular buildings I'm talking about where they've got the really high windows in them? Kaylee, you know someone broke in the house after while Chris was in jail too, right? Someone trying to get evidence out in SUV. There is a lot of symbols. Um, yes, definitely. Oh, No way. Grand Lodge? That just sounds like... Oh. Yeah, so that's uh, a little bit of snippet of another side bit of information. And and like I say, going back to the Freemason, like I cannot stress enough how much it is a secret society. Um, if, if you go dobbing on the Freemason... Or, or yeah put them in they can literally ruin your life that kind of stuff oh my God. because that well, very that high up dignity why he involved. would be quiet like you know like you know it makes more sense like he's always doing it for love like no i, I can't that just, just doesn't set with me like love he knows he's he can't even talk to her like what, what is he still protecting okay sorry i have to do this i want to know like how close this lodge yeah, masonic lodges to... is another name for them beth for, but they're all they're all part of the freemason secret society and they love wearing aprons the like look at they love wearing freaking shit around their neck like they're the, like they're the mayors and, and stuff There you go. So that's that compass symbol I was talking about in the background. Hey guys, welcome to my channel, The House Huddle. We will be discussing true crime cases in detail, highlighting the evidence, facts, and public health concerns that are presented in each one. I've been an active member of the true crime community for several years and researching independently several topics in question regarding specifically for this video, the case of Shanann, Bella, Cece, and Nico Watts. I decided to dig a little deeper into the subject of the Masons once I discovered that we have a personal family tie to the Masons. This topic has come up over the past three plus years, resulting in theories and speculation that NK's father was a Mason and that somehow meant she was protected, etc. As you can imagine, being a mother, I wanted to better educate myself rather than suspect a group based on mere ignorance and theory. Originally, this was going to air at 10 a.m. However, as I was putting on the finishing touches, I stumbled upon even more information that resulted in more questions. 
So we very well may end up looking into this a little bit further. From being a fraternity to the Vatican being quoted calling it the synagogue of Satan, as stated from the History Channel, this theory may have more merit than I originally thought. It was my decision to look into this to debunk a theory, and now I feel I have more questions. Let's get a little more background on the Colorado organization. As you will see, the layout of the website is very much like that of a college brochure. It's very wholesome, filled with charities and good deeds. You will see me address this in the interview. The outward appearance doesn't give rise to many questions and initially relieved any concerns I had, but I wouldn't be into true crime if I believed the cookie cutter presentations and narratives. I kept digging. Something I would have you pay attention to are the responses that he gives. What he says is backed by several Freemason Lodge websites that are easily Googled. My contact is not someone I know personally. We merely know each other from the fitness industry, but have never met in person to the best of my knowledge. Fitness competitions and expos expose you to a lot of people and you never know who are on the other side of the Facebook profile picture. Notice as he starts to answer the questions, he can't believe I'm asking about criminal acts but I can't help but note a little sarcasm. Then the comment about you've been watching too many movies and then laughing it off. You'll see as I express or explain the details that this wasn't a movie, this was a horrible case and that I was wanting to better educate myself, he begins to open up. He goes on to explain about the organization as being a worldwide fraternity and not necessarily a local social club you know I guess more so like not a good old boys club however you can also read a little bit more about this on the websites that are found online um, I explained to him I wanted to debunk a theory and didn't want to make an assumption off of mere ignorance you can tell by the expression that that's something he feels pretty passionate about as well is that people are, are ignorant about the organization and then they take speculations and treat them as gospel i wanted to make sure he understood that i appreciated his time for understanding and that while i understood some of these questions were a bit much you know having family tie not understanding as a mom a little bit of background with family it was important for me to just learn a little bit more about the organization he says no problem have a good weekend and then this was the part that I was a little bit um, taken aback by was when I said so in your opinion if a man were on the verge of divorce or violence would this organization be more positive influence on him and his decision making or was it more business oriented and then his question is, is this a hypothetical man already a member? Unless he is vouched for, he's not even considered for membership. I explained that that's unclear, but in light of the theory being the organization would have negatively influenced him, it kind of goes against everything I've read online as more so the organization is positive. He does point out that People from all walks of life, including presidents, philosophers, politicians, pastors, the guy at the gas station, and even women can be Masons. It's important to note the Freemasons require you to believe in a higher power, not one specific. Your higher power could be Christ, Satan, or the Son, and you're qualified on that front. This explains why the Catholic Church and many others don't support membership. Keep in mind, Shanann's mother is described as a devout Catholic. What does this mean for an organization's moral foundation? Ethics. At what point is it a club, rather a cult? It brings me back to one response from this interview that you felt compelled to restate. There are good and bad seeds everywhere. different over the last, I don't know, two days, three days? Odd vehicles, odd noise, odd lights. I don't think she there mentioned the truck. There was a truck out here yesterday. In fact, that's why I thought you were here yesterday. Yes, yeah, she does. 
complained about that okay. I can the see timing, the timing, the timing, one of the, yeah, true. yeah, Betty. Um, it was kind of almost a steel gray. Okay. Don't ask me, mate. Okay. <laughs> year, but that was late afternoon. The dad has a great big truck, and it's gray. But okay. this one was one. smaller. Okay. This one was smaller. Um, but I hadn't seen it before, so I. Any markings or stickers or anything that would be weird? You want by a chance to remember if the plate was green or red or? No, I kind of just glare. I don't glance pay any it. attention because he, I believe he owns his own business or something because um, he always has a truck parked there. So okay. kind of. I gotcha. I just kind of noticed it wasn't the normal mm -hmm. truck. Was it uh, dirty any, by any means? No, no, it wasn't. And it couldn't have been that old. Okay. How long was the truck sitting there? I saw it um, yesterday morning around 5.15 a.m. because I go to the gym then. Okay. It was still there when I got back at quarter of seven. And then it was there around, I think, noontime. And the only, the reason I mention it is it, it was gone by the time you guys left yesterday. Okay. Well, did you see the police in the area while that truck was still here? See, I can't see it from my house. Ah, uh, gotcha. gotcha. So um, it could have been gone by then. Okay. But you know, this is this is unusual. Very quiet neighborhood. Right, 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 right. Yes, yes, this is very unusual. That's why we're trying to get a lot of resources out here trying to find them and, and make sure they're yeah, okay. So, I, mean, um, I didn't know she was pregnant again. I hardly ever see her. Okay. How do you know she's pregnant? It said it on Neighborhood Watch. Okay. I got you. But you didn't know it? No. Okay. I hardly ever see her just normally. Right. Um, they keep very much to themselves. When you did see her, did you ever see her around her husband? Yeah. How they were would they? have barbecues. Yeah. Were they polite, friendly, or was she kind of mm -hmm. quiet, reserved? Or how, what was they that? both are very quiet, very quiet reserved, reserved, very quiet. Okay. When nice was the last neighbors. time you spoke to her? Oh, my gosh. I don't think I've seen her all summer. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And yeah. kiddos, when was the last time you saw little kiddos? You're making me... My brain. I know, really digging deep in there. It, it could be four to six weeks since they've been out. They have all their little toys. But they don't go outside in the heat of the day. At least that's kind of what I notice. And they don't go outside unless an adult is there. Wonderful. I'm glad. I mean, yeah. the two little will be out by themselves. Yeah, they are. What are they? Three and five, I think. Uh, or two and four, or something like that. Three and four. Three and four. According to my yeah. my, sh my pamphlet. Yeah. So. Yeah, cute okay. little things. Anything that I haven't asked that you think I should know, or is just odd, or something you thought was weird? I wouldn't think anything is weird from over there because normally you hardly ever see anyone go in, come out. Now I saw his truck leave yesterday. Um, Maybe it was this morning I was leaving for the gym. His truck had the lights on, which is unusual for that morning, you know, 5.15 in the morning. Only fools like me are up. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't usually see him leave at that time of day? No. Oh, was that the gray truck, or what truck was that? That was his regular truck. It's a pretty big truck. Maybe, what could I compare it to? An F. 250, 350, the big ones, yeah. And that steel truck, is that like a pickup or a... Pickup. Pickup truck? Yeah. Is that a camper or anything? A camper shell or anything on the back of it? Um... Mm -hmm. Would you say it's bigger than that truck? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did it have two or four doors to move? Um, no, I don't. I never paid much attention. Okay. You're going to stop paying attention. This is scary. It doesn't happen again, or yeah, very often I, at least. I hope not. Oh, God, I hope these 
the mother and two children are found okay. But there is, there's no, like I said, never any noise, never any yelling, very quiet, very pleasant when you speak to them. They keep to themselves. Never heard an argument or anything over there? Never. Okay. Did they ever mention if they've ever been in a fight or having bad days to you? No. No? No, the, the neighbors, and we really don't talk much. I mean, Cheryl and I do because we're the same age. There's so much younger. There's not a lot in common. Okay. You know. Okay. No, no, we don't talk much to each other anymore. Was it yesterday morning, Monday morning, that you went to the gym? I go every day. Okay. So then, uh, if you can remember yesterday morning, going out. Um, was there... That's when I noticed the little truck. Okay. And where was it? Was it in the driveway or on the street? No, it was or... on the street. It was, it was between the two houses, right about in front of my tree, you know. He said it's a little truck or the... Um, it's a smaller truck than what's normally there. Okay, like that size or smaller? No, maybe that size. Maybe that size? Okay. No camper. And that was a gray one? Yeah. And you think his, his normal <laughs> truck's like a 2500 yeah, or 3500? Yeah, it's a bigger truck. But both gray? Yeah, but different shades of gray. Okay. The other littler one, was it darker or lighter? I believe it was lighter. Okay. It's more like a steel gray. Yeah. yeah. And the other one's darker. Um, maybe a hint of green in the gray. Okay. Yeah. But I haven't, except for this morning, come to think of it, I haven't seen a lot of the big trucks. Is that what you're finding? You haven't seen. I mean... Not that I want to wake at five in the morning, right. but, you know, you're making me think that I did see the truck, I believe it was this morning, because the lights were turned on, and I was pulling, you have to be careful coming out of here, because sure. it's kind of a three-way mess if you're all going the same yeah. place. But I noticed that the back lights were on. But, um, that was around 5.15 this morning? Yeah, I leave 5.15 every morning. And that's kind of odd for him. Well, I don't, not often do I see the lights that early. Okay. But then he could leave at 520 and I would not know. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Do you see him leave sometimes in the morning to go to work? Ever not heard? often. No. no. I kind of keep to myself and, you know, not, I'm really not nosy. I have been the last two days with you sure. guys out here, but. Is it just you that lives here, or? No, I have a significant other, but he's at work. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, how far out does your ring camera go? Um, it's just this area, the front porch and around the front of the garage. Okay. Did you see any, have you looked back on yesterday morning or this morning and see anything on? My significant other, he keeps track of it at work all the time, and he can tell when the postman comes and everything. And um, I'm here most most of the time. I was gone this morning for a bit, but uh, you know, postman, nothing out of the norm. Out of we the have norm. a lot, a lot of dog uh, walkers. Okay. They come by. Okay. And the camera over the garage is that just the garage area? Is that a light? It focuses on this area. This area. Okay. Yeah. So not, uh, that's not going to see out to the roadway. No. Okay. Would it be picked up if the light came and flashed on it? Would it, would it pick up as you drove by? Um, if it casts the a ringer shadow, does. The ringer does. Yeah, and the ringer, basically the ringer will pick up right at that corner there. Okay. I've not seen, I don't see people walking up and down unless they're walking their dogs. Yeah. And kids are going back to school, so right. I don't even see them much anymore. Okay. Um, did you, yesterday morning, did you happen to see your neighbor, neighbor's truck um, in the driveway or on the street? I didn't the... notice it. No? Okay. No. no. And I don't look for it, you know, like 
like I said, it was I saw the back lights on, and that's what caught my attention. That was this morning. Is he not home either? Your neighbor? Yeah. Yeah, he's home. Um, any other odd vehicles, pickups, cars, planes, no. trains, helicopters? No. <laughs> no, we don't get. I know Cheryl has a lot of company, but I know she tells me when they're coming. And okay. Other than that, I don't see a lot. His, now, the neighbor across the street has a big truck, Remert Construction or something. He must own his own business. That's not here today. Okay. And that, that's gone. But, and he, he packs it right there a lot of times. But other than that, it's really so quiet here. <laughs> it's a good thing, except <laughs> people can get away with things like this when you're not when you're in a quiet neighborhood and nobody's really watching. Well, I'm going to leave you this. It has a couple of phone numbers to contact Detective Dave Baumhover mm -hmm. or an email address if there's something that pops in mind or something I didn't ask or something that's just odd that you want to get out to us. Please feel free to either call us or email him. Okay. Everything helps. Um, don't ever think. Hey guys, you're going to see Betty coming out and turning left. And there's her car. There's her headlights coming down her driveway. There is her turning left. You can see the lights go left. And then three seconds later, you see the red car coming. Okay. Is this the neighbor's footage where the car's back in beside him? There's Betty's lights coming down her driveway. <laughs> I'm actually getting OCD? under control by being a little bit more of a mess. <laughs> oh, so you're OCD too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're, I'm shocking. I'm you're shocking. All the D's. Um, <laughs> oh my! Like, duh. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, but but also, I'm because I'm an older person. I was also at an age where it didn't have a name back then. Oh, Wendy's just high pie. She just had too much sugar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they call that now just being. But now, a, yeah, yeah, it's all the alphabets. And... Oh, for sure. Now they're so quick to kind of put a diagnosis on it. And, and kids now is like, I, hyper kids are, they're all like, oh, I got to gotta take my ADHD medicine and I got to give my kid my ADHD medicine. And I'm like, what oh. the hell? Like, the, I don't, my son is ADHD, but I'm just like, no, we're just going to, we have a certain time of day where I know if I'm going to be able to deal and not, and not pull my hair out, like, we're just going to, we're, <laughs> it's time for water, no juice. Like, like oh. he doesn't even know what soda is because it just, there's no need to do that to me or him because he is just wakes up that way. Like it's a, do if I could bottle it up and sell it, I'd be a millionaire. His energy. And I can also tell it. I can also tell because you were just talking really fast just a moment ago, and I can actually talk really, really fast too. Sometimes when I'm in a work situation, I can talk like so fast, and I don't even have to say and um and all the rest of it, and I can just explain stuff so clearly and off the top of my head. And people are just like, oh, what the fuck did you say? Like, yeah, I had <laughs> when I've been in me, work I, environments I, and I've, I've been like, yeah, I've been second in charge. <laughs> I'm like, don't talk fast, and they're like, what? You don't know? And I'm like, I no. I mean, to me, I'm just that. It, that's normal. I guess that's why sometimes on streams they're like moving too slow for me. I do watch them on like at least one one and a half times speed because I'm just like, dude, come <laughs> and talk it in slow motion. Like, get move this shit along. <laughs> uh, but that's why I'm so exhausted. Well, I'm, good, I'm actually being, yeah, I oh, know, yeah. And then and then um, and if if you sounds like you've got a lot of similar, well, the the, the common label is mental issues. Um. But I find it hard to go to sleep. Like, I can be dead dog tired, but then as soon as I lay down, so I might be, you know, um, sometimes I'll, because I've got my tablet on a stand and shit like that, sometimes I might go and just sit on the lounge and watch my tablet, and I'll think, oh, I might just lay down, you know, and then I can think, I'll just go off to sleep. But as soon as I lay down, my brain just starts going even faster than what it was when I was sitting up. Yeah, and then it's like, okay, i got to get like, up and do this one more thing. Because and, and if, if I don't, then I'll forget, and i got, or at least write it down before you know it, I'm like, 
12 pages into my notebook. Yeah, I haven't Yeah, I was about to say, next week, you know, you're, you're freaking back out of bed, you make yourself another cup of tea, and you're starting to freaking do more shit around the place, and think, I'll just go and get the all this done. <laughs> yeah, and then you get on YouTube, and then that's the first thing that goes. Oh, my God. Girl, Ryan, <laughs> she said I had to check my speed. I think I've found, I think I've just found my new spirit. <laughs> I think I've just found my new spirit animal. You're my new spirit animal, Kaylee. <laughs> Girl Ryan's like, she's going to have to check my playback speed. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine when I saw There's like, nothing wrong with your playback speed. When you're talking like at a time, one and a half speed. So, you know, maybe you've just got to work out how to play it slower when you want to read it all back later on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cracking me up. Decipher it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because when you started talking really fast, I just I just had like a quick flashback because I don't normally meet people that talk as fast as what I do when I'm in that real high pace stage. And then you started talking 100 mile an hour an hour and that sort of stuff, and I could actually understand every one of your words really, really clearly because I could actually talk at 100 mile an hour as well. And, and I just thought, fuck, is that what I sound? Now I know what people are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said it to me the other night. They're like, I'm sorry, you talk too fast. I couldn't understand you. I said, well, put fucking subtitles on. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, God. Think about, make a conscious decision to slow my talking. Like, I can't. It, it's like I can't, I can't think in slow motion. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Then I oh, love how girl arrives like she just had to check your playback speed. It's like I got dyslexia all of a sudden. <laughs> My brain has one speed. Well, actually, um, I, I, I've been um, – so I finally got, got a um, – so like I was saying back in the olden days because I'm, you know, like 50, well, 54, nearly 55. Amy! Amy! Um, <laughs> And back in the olden days, there wasn't like none of these freaking diagnoses and that sort of stuff or all this sort of shit that I've allegedly got. Now they've given me a new one. They, they say I've got dysthymia. So dysthymia is like the bunch box of spaghetti of – the way I explain it is dysthymia, just with a D-Y, thymia, um, is like the, the, the freaking whole spaghetti box of mental illnesses, except I don't have no voices talking to me. But, and quite frankly, when I'm talking 100 mile an hour, there's really no time for the voices to catch up with me. They don't even get a chance to, like, drop in. Amy will tell you that I'm a frigging bad talker. Dys <laughs> dystomia is a milder but long-lasting form of depression. It's also called persistent depressive disorder. People with this condition may also have bouts of major depression at times. Depression is a mood disorder and involves your body. Blah, blah, blah. No oh, is that the dystomia you're checking out? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh so, it's, so a, it's I can a, have extreme highs. Extreme yeah. lows. Yes. It's like cross of many depressing, freaking ADHD, freaking PTSD, all the Ds went to game. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because they, they don't call it freaking manic depressive. Like back in the day, it was called manic depressive, and normally that was like diagnosed for older women, like not so much your kids. But yeah, oh, they wow. don't call it manic depressive now. I think it's, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Extreme highs, extreme lows. They used to call I it I don't take bipolar. medication for it because I've yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. A, well, is bipolar that, is part of it as well. Right, so that, yeah. So that's why I've got the just, box spaghetti of it all. Yeah, wow. I don't even know what it would be called now because the term's done changed since the last time I went. Shoot. We all really They even say that I've got a problem with, with authority figures, but I don't actually have a problem oh. with authority figures. I've only got oh a problem with assholes. I do too. It's, I have a very, very, very um, – Defiant, defiant. I don't issue. have an authority problem. I've got an arsehole problem. I'm a it's rebel. an arsehole problem. <laughs> it's a difference. I'm a rebel. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> oh, mine's bad. Like, I, know, I, I will know that it's like completely going to be something that I want to do or that's the better for me. But just because I feel like I'm being told what to do, like I'm going to buck it. And then, and then whenever I come around, it's going to be because I wanted to like, and just leave me alone. <laughs> don't tell me what to do. I did it because I wanted to. Yeah. All the Amy, D's. Amy's got all the D's going on as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to just call it, we'll just call it the D disorder. D yeah. syndrome. <laughs> the dirty D's. <laughs> the dirty D's. Dirty D's done dirt cheap. <laughs> 
Oh. We were actually doing, like, it did start out being, like, a true crime channel, Amy, and then we wound up going to, like, um, religions, okay. which was related to the Chris Watts thing because I gave I gave Three Kaylee Masons. an absolute epiphany, which, yeah. Yeah, Three Masons. Gave Kaylee new new epiphany on it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were going to go through the chicken but now just, just, oh. just fuck it. I'm not wasting my time again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because it just it, it answers all the questions now, doesn't it? it answers all the Chris Watts stuff now. It's going to happen, but they're going to come after me for proving it. I'll be damned. <laughs> Possibly. I mean, it's, it's not a far-fetched idea. Yeah, no, that's scary. <laughs> uh, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not that, uh, I'm not, mm -mm, it, I, I'm not going to say it doesn't mean that much to me. Oh, but thank you, girl, much. Ryan. <laughs> Kaylee, you need to... Girl Ryan really enjoyed this Chris Watts episode. <laughs> Do you think it's been a show? Great show. And I've been a great co-host. Oh, woo -woo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it, 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 oh, I'm goodness. What's, wow, that is a lot of Ds. You're right. Yeah. Hey, Wendy is winning combo for sure. Heck, should I yeah. <laughs> So we're not like two. Uh, can you imagine? Oh, I'm gonna goodness. listen back to the replay. I'm gonna listen to it on two times speed. I bet you we sound like chipmunk. <laughs> 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 hey, but the thing is, if we listen to it on two times speed, we probably still understand it <laughs> because we're even already talking a hundred miles an hour. I know what I'm saying. Like even when you were talking a hundred miles an hour, I knew exactly what you were saying. Right. Even though I'm going, yeah. fuck, is that what I sound like? <laughs> Oh shit, maybe I do talk fast. <laughs> Especially when you hear someone else doing it and you understand everything they say. I'm like, oh shit. Like, man, damn. Especially when the stream's already like behind and lagging. Y'all poor people in chat. I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> I don't even. Oh, goodness. Take like a breath. Like, I gotta go, go, go. I got. I'm on a mission. I don't even know. Just can't <laughs> stop. Won't stop. <laughs> oh, it, goodness. Oh, yeah, it has a way more lag than StreamYard, but it's okay. It's not terrible, but I mean, it probably is for the people in chat, but sucks to suck. I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have the chat like, like button. My I already thing, did. Like, I don't know why I checked. I always hit the like button. It's a good probably at least 10 solid, maybe 11, 12 seconds behind, like from where it's at on the YouTube app and then where it's at, like in the stream yard. Thing. <laughs> on the other device, yeah. Crazy. If you're that using two devices. Up. Yeah, because I have it on, well, I have it on like five devices, just, but I have it on like my TV in front of me, <laughs> muted, <laughs> muted so I can see the chat, like, so that whenever I was sharing screen, because I couldn't see the other one. And, um, it's like, I'm like, what the heck? Like, and it, I'm looking at my TV distracted from what I'm actually reading on my computer. And I'm like, dude, that's just, I'm not even on that page in the discovery. And it's just, it's bad for my ADD. <laughs> Very bad. I'm like, uh. I know. And that's why I asked if I could come up because, because you were answering my questions like <laughs> two and a half minutes <laughs> late. Like you're just reading it for the first time kind of thing. And then, and then when it happened again, I'm thinking, Oh, see, this really is lagging this chat on. Oh, I've got to come up. This is like driving me crazy. All my <laughs> D's are coming out. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need to be answered in real time. I did the same thing. Oh, fuck this bullshit. Give me uh, a link. <laughs> well, it's not so, it wasn't even so much. I wasn't even so much being answered in real time. You know, like there was stuff I wanted to say to you while you were on topic. Right. And, and because you know, it, because of all your D's, just in the discovery. Yeah, yeah, like all your D's or somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a few D's later, and like, oh, you're way off tro topic, and it's like, wow, well, it's kind of pointless trying to tap that in now. Because <laughs> it looks like I'm slow. <laughs> just do a lap, do a lap. Sticky tab. Yeah. Oh man, I'm a sticky. You should see my room. Man, I it's probably like illegal to have as many sticky notes as I do in the places I have them. I just I need it. <laughs> <laughs> in different uh, colors and different you, like, you sound like you have different fonts and markers and it's like, you know, red if it's really, really important and then, you know, there's levels to the <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> 
I printed well, them Well, once all again, because I'm older, my, mine are on pieces of paper. I've got, like, shit written on pieces of paper everywhere. I'm probably glad I didn't do the sticky notes idea because, yeah, I probably have them everywhere as well. Bad enough on pieces of paper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And when I say pieces of paper, it doesn't even always make it a notebook, you know. It'd be like, oh, shit, where's an old business card? I need to write that on the back there and keep that somewhere safe. Oh, yeah, that's sticky note worthy shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, Ryan's starting to write on the on the beams. <laughs> oh, not me. See, I just, I find myself looking at my, because they're pretty colors, like, I'm I looking at them, like, right now. <laughs> See, my brain works differently. Amy said, "I just uh, Liz Heather can understand us, and she's really like, hi. Hey, that that means we're all right. Well, no, that probably means we sound normal because she's a little slow mo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we're at normal speed. Yeah, slight slight time delay, but we probably sound like we're talking like this because her brain should be technically going. Oh, I can't talk. I, I like to um indulge." <laughs> I have to indulge because, like I say to people, like I've got to try and um, I have a smoke just so I can run at normal speed. And I've actually said that commonly through my life. Like I only smoke so I run at normal speed. I remember when I um was playing in a band and I'd go to band practice and stuff, and I was playing in this, this a duo band with this other young fella, and we were, we were in, um, played music together for like seven and a half years. It was it's longer than most of my relationships. And we never slept with each other band member wise either. But um, I remember the very first time I turned up to band practice straight, and he thought I was stoned because he'd never seen me straight at other practices and just assumed that when I did turn up straight, he's like, Are you all right? You're stoned. You, you, you seem different. And I'm going, Nah, man, I'm straight. I said, This is what I'm like, but I haven't had anything to smoke. Like, come on, let's go, let's go. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> he had it all backwards, so he didn't. It you're stoned, you're normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, Amy, don't even get me started. I promise you, like, if I was to show you my my multiple different storage accounts on digitally with my screenshot files, it, it, you would be dis you would be disgusted. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've got a lot of screenshots as well. Thousands. I mean, I am, listen, I am it's 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 bad. It's an addiction. I think. I don't know. I've just never. I've been <laughs> in too many situations where they're like, "Oh, if it did, if you have no proof, it didn't happen." Okay, bitch, watch this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A screenshot. Everything. Yeah, I got And then when I go like, oh, yeah. I probably don't need this yeah. anymore. I'm like, nah. You never know. Yeah, I've gotten so bad now that I even um. Just, just to go up the road, depending on what I'm doing, what situation I'm going to be doing, because um, I've got a lot of legal crap going on. I'm the executive of my father's will, and there's just a lot of dodgy arseholes going on that's been dragging on for four and a half years, and there's, I've had to sack the solicitor. My brother committed domestic violence, punching holes in the outside of my house and trying to kick the screen door in. All sorts of fun stuff like that. And whenever I don't have my phone on, some idiot will say something, and it's like, man, I wish I could have recorded that. You know, like, will you put that in the right? No, no, don't want to be involved. Don't want to do with me. It's like, okay, all right. So I've got to start freaking having shit on record when I go up the road in case someone spills the beans about something. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. If nothing else, just so that, um, you know, the protect yourself because shit gets twisted and yeah. people, people can say anything. And, yeah. you know, that, that, and when it becomes a your word against them and uh, that shit gets a little dodgy, as you say. Well, that's one of the reasons why, why I prefer to do um, emails or text messaging as opposed to a phone call because then it's always immortalized in writing. Right. I hate um, talking on the phone. Because that's also an experience I had. Oh, yeah. I'm not very phone friendly anymore. Like, I will ignore your phone and anymore. text you, like, <laughs> what's up? Like, like I just, uh so much. Yeah. I just don't like it. Not my thing. Only honestly, like if you I think the conversation me, like, can end quicker if it's on I'm text. like, why would I do? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? You know, don't be weird. Like, <laughs> text me like a normal person. 
my dad hates it. He's like, oh, oh, texting. Bookmarker. Bookmarker. Oh, oh. I don't do yeah, that. Yeah, like a computer, or well, I'm assuming computer bookmarking, like bookmarking the com computer page site thing. I I've don't got a do lot that of on the um, laptop. I have a weird thing about like not clearing all my cash and cookies and stuff, but I just screenshot it and it's a book. That's how I bookmark it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think yeah, digital. Oh, <laughs> oh, so. Man. If I delete my search history, does that delete my computer bookmarks as well? Oh no, but I'm bad about still the, like, doing the like the cash and the the cookies and like you know doing that. And I do that once a week, so it's like all your saved passwords and everything. Like because I'm I'm just like I'm constantly in fast forward. So if my computer <laughs> starts lagging, I'm like all this shit's got to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. None of it. I don't care about any of it. Go load faster. <laughs> I've had to do that with me, um, me mobile phone recently. Had to do a big friggin', you know, empty out of all the photos, or not all the photos, but you know, um, a lot of them are screenshots, crap like that. Sometimes just a screenshot of something funny you want to send to someone. And it's like, right. well, I don't need that anymore. Not relevant. See, um, see, I can't find, bring myself to delete it. That's that's where I'm at in life. Because then as soon as I delete it, something will happen, and I'll be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I deleted that. I'm never doing it again. 50,000 photos on your phone. Holy crap. Mm, I mean, I, I wouldn't. I Between my different devices, like my Google Drive and my iCloud and stuff, I, I, I eh, probably. I don't even want to talk about it. I was looking at mine. I've got close to 5,000. I've got. 2,291 in one file, 1,644 in another one, and then I've got, you know, the Animal friggin' album, that's only got 48, the, you know, trips, trips away. Oh, there you go, screenshots, 249. <laughs> yeah. Certainly not a 50,000. Oh. Yeah, there's levels to this. Crazy. Show. Man, I screen some of my screens. How do you locate the pick in cloud? I don't know. Can you how do you locate a pick in your cloud? What do you mean? Like how do I do it, or like in general, like how do you, how do you find it? No, girl Ryan's. How do you? Girl Ryan says, but how do you locate a pick in your clouds? I don't know. Okay, how I do You're it? Talking a foreign language to me. Like iCloud, she's saying like, how do I find it, or do I just scroll forever?